Well, Lisa, there's two stories about the economy right now, where the economy is with the coronavirus and where it would have been if not for the coronavirus. And many of the numbers we're going to get this week fall in the latter category. We've got some housing numbers. The Fed rate cuts have boosted housing. That may help some. And we look at the durable goods orders coming up on Thursday. That'll tell us whether or not companies, because of the phase one China deal, were getting back into the game. Those are the important numbers out this week. But we're all going to be talking about the coronavirus. In China, they are talking about sterilizing cash injections. No, I don't mean offsetting them. I mean, actually spraying stuff on the bills to sterilize them as they pass around. That's where we are right now. Investors now see the Fed, and you can see that Rich Clare, the vice chairman, is speaking tomorrow, reducing rates at least twice. You've been talking about that. But also, we're talking about rate cuts in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the possibility of the ECB and Bank of Japan joining in as well. And the question that raises is why. You've been talking about this. In the short run, we might have a demand problem, but is a rate cut going to get people who are terrified of catching the virus out of their houses to go spend money? And medium to long term, this is a supply shock, and the Fed can't do anything about a supply shock. Central banks are set up to deal with demand shocks. You can see what's happened there. We are below zero on the real Fed funds rate. That is not helping growth anywhere else, like Europe, Italy. Yeah. And if they don't get going, we're still going to have a problem whether the Fed moves or not. So I would think that uh, this might make equity investors feel better to talk about a rate cut, but it's not going to do anything for the economy.